Hey everybody, welcome to Top 10 Mocks. This is the episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. And links to absolutely everything I'm showing you in this episode is in the description below. I highly recommend you check out the Flickr pages of the designers that I'm featuring this episode. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Black Friday is coming up. We're gonna have a massive sale throughout, I think, the whole weekend. So if you guys are interested in building some high quality, very amazing LEGO custom creations yourself, we have a variety of instructions listed at our web store www.brickfault.toys. And alright, let's move on to the very first build of the week. It's not the first time I've seen a Nintendo Game Boy done in LEGO bricks, but this might be the best one. It's incredibly smooth, everything is proportional. My guess is it's pretty close to life size, probably a little smaller. But of course, the thing that really gives this life is the fact that the designer Frost Bricks put this into the context of a Game Boy being developed by tiny little elves in, I'm gonna suppose, Santa's workshop. It seems pretty appropriate thematically, considering we're at the end of November now, and I really enjoy the use of those trans neon green plates to make up the screen. Now here's another one, relatively small build from Edward Lawrence. This is a build that uh, the designer claims is loosely inspired by the Schneider Trophy aircraft of the 1930s. Personally, it's got a bit of a Jetsons look to me, but the reason why I chose this is, A, it's a very fun, clean little uh, speeder or racer, but I I also enjoy the use of those little one by one half cylinder round pieces that are on the front edge of the wing. It's a relatively new piece and the first time I've seen it used in this context and I think it looks great, I have a feeling that that is definitely going to be a technique borrowed by designers uh, for years to come. It just has a great way of rounding over the front of a wing. Now this next giant brick built Bionicle mostly style figure, it comes from the uh, designer Mitch Henry and it's the Kongu Toa Typhoon. Love the color combination. The Bionicle pieces have a way of looking very organic or muscular. And conceptually this character is relatively simple, he's a big dude with a bunch of machine guns, but the barrel pieces used at the top for the ammo crates and the feeding tube lines just have a great way of standing out. Also those breathing tubes in the front are awesome, I like how the gears match up quite well with those little ridges. And we're moving on to another design from Tino Putianen, and it's similar to a lot of wonderful little speeder designs that are so popular amongst LEGO designers, but there are a lot, and I mean a lot of really fun, subtle little choices made by this designer to uh, to make this thing really stand out amongst the crowd for this last week. First of all, I love that you can see the scale here. He used those little micro figures from the, uh, I believe those guys came from the Saturn V set. They have the little astronaut prints there in the front, so you can see it's a nice big uh, open rounded wind screen, but there's a lot of subtle design choices made here that uh, really make the details stand out quite well. Right in the front top center, that is an old astronaut jetpack piece with the inverted round 2x2 two two covering it up. Right in front of that, there's some offset 1x1 one one yellow tiles that look great. I don't know how he did it, but he got this wonderful flush line uh, to go between the body and the wing. There's a little bit of tapering off with the 1x8 gray tile in the back of the wing, which looks nice. Even the little pointy bit that comes out of the back thruster uh, just smooths the whole thing over. Over, and I definitely enjoy the inclusion of the uh, lipstick pieces for the front by the blasters. If there was ever a design that had more to it than initially meets the eye, this is probably taking the cake for the week. And now we're moving on to one of my favorite, mostly gray designs that I've seen in a really long time. It's hard to make gray look really fun and interesting, even though of course that's usually the primary color for most spaceships, but this is quite different. It's actually a space station and it was designed by Hellboy Lego. My guess is it's some kind of military outpost because you've got some armed guards that uh, line some of the walkways. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a prison actually, but the use of the panel pieces and slope pieces, and I'm gonna guess the designer may have cleared out uh, the entirety of some of their lots just to get all those grill, studs, and modified bar clip pieces to line the entire edge of this facility. The stonework detailing is kind of simple, but not really because you can actually see that it rounds over just along with the rest of the exterior, and it differentiates Differentiates the building from the landscape just a little bit, but I kind of enjoy the the monotone, the primarily monotone look of this building because it really kind of forces you to focus on the shapes more so than anything else. Now, I'm not much of an expert when it comes to Technic. All I know is that this is one amazing Lego Technic car build, and it definitely looks like some uh, interesting techniques were used to uh, make these shapes actually come alive the way that they do. My guess is that flexi tube pieces were used to make a lot of those curves 
curved shapes. The designer left uh, just a tiny bit of space between a lot of those link arms, which allows them to kind of have a wonderful curvy shape. The wheel wells in particular really grabbed me here. And I also appreciate that this build doesn't rely on custom stickers or hardly at all. I think just the red stripe through the center is a sticker and maybe nothing else. And by the way, this is a Ford GT, if I didn't say it earlier. From the designer Moco, we have another wonderful large brick built figure. You can see this is primarily with uh, some interesting bionicle pieces. I don't know where those red shapes come from. If somebody knows, please let me know in the comments below. And the title for this creation is simply Cancer, you know, the crab. So the title definitely makes a lot of sense. I can see where the where it comes from. I enjoy all the little spiky bits that are sticking out off the side. Crabs usually do have, and lobsters will have spines and stuff sticking out on the sides of the shells. I enjoy the black fade for the toes in the front and the silver highlights seem to be really well placed because there are those kind of more bleached areas of crab and lobster shells. The head is sunken into the chest slash shoulder area and of course it makes this creature look incredibly muscular and he's a guy that you definitely wouldn't want to mess with. I think that's a built-in light function for the glowing eyes in the center and I definitely enjoy those little ice skate pieces on either side of the face. Moko's an absolutely excellent designer. If you haven't seen the figures that this designer has created, please check out the links in the description below. You will definitely not be disappointed. And then in the last three, we're not really going in an order of best to worst or anything like that, uh, but we are in the final three now. This is from Hunter Erickson, and the title is Roman Capua 73 BC. I believe that is supposed to be Spartacus and other escaped slaves that are hiding in the sewers, and I'm not much of a uh, historian, so perhaps this is actually a scene uh, taken as close as we can guess to something that happened within history back then. But personally, I just jumped onto this creation because of the amazing design. If you take a close look at the sewers underneath, you can see the arching tiles that start to curve up towards the top. Not an easy thing to pull off, and it's a detail that you don't really, uh, that you won't be able to see very easily. So I just love the extra inclusion of effort there. And you can also see with the, uh, the white plastered buildings, there's a wonderful bit of detailing that kind of sticks out. Some are just plate pieces with lips. Other bumps have actual tiles sticking out, probably attached to headlight pieces, if I had to guess. And then tiles that stick out here and there with also studs and rounded joints from uh, little plate hinge pieces. Excellent little uh, design for the rooftop there with the upturned tiles. And uh, yeah, just wonderful little details that really make this scene feel very, very alive. Now we've moved on to the builder Raves Cat, who made a motorized CH-47. The full name of this helicopter is the Boeing CH-47 Chinook, which is, I've always known it as the Chinook growing up. This is one of the few helicopters that I really, really liked as a kid. And due to its nice, big, elongated design when it comes to a fig scale, or what looks like a fig scale version of the helicopter, hidden motor features are actually pretty easy to install. Or uh, maybe I shouldn't say easy, but uh, they can be installed, and they have been here. The design itself looks awesome. I love the use of all those little uh, wedge pieces that make up the angle for the front of the nose. He must have had a pretty massive bricklink order for all of those uh, uh, arch pieces that make up the top of the helicopter. And Reeves Cat should definitely be proud of this design because it not only looks amazing uh, just from an aesthetic standpoint, but I'm sure if you brought this to a convention, it would definitely draw the eyes with the spinning blades. Now the last build of the week comes from Damien Thomas, and it's actually two builds, though the newer skull that we're looking at here, the Dilophosaurus, is the one that was built more recently. For those that haven't seen light size dinosaur skulls built in white Lego Technic before. This is, I mean, you're not gonna see anybody else doing stuff like this, and probably for good reason. This looks incredibly difficult and time consuming uh, to be able to try to figure something like this out. What I like is that, especially within uh, skull bones, there are a lot of thin and kind of uh, sharply edged areas of the bone. So Technic really works for the aesthetic of this, I think. Also, it's very long and smooth and there's nice little uh, uh, arching areas, but really these are kind of the best pieces to use in order to create the shapes that you want. The Dilophosaurus skull specifically has a lot of interesting openings in the bone. I'm not really cross-referencing this with uh, actual pictures, but I'm going to assume that Damien probably followed the specs pretty darn close, because it looks it looks like a Dilophosaurus. And then the one that he created, I think like a year ago, is the Triceratops, which is amazing. Such a cool creation. And his first attempt was uh, with a T-Rex that he did back in 2000 
2017. Also pretty darn good, but I do feel like his more recent creations have definitely shown some massive improvements over the years. So anyways, that's going to be it for my top 10 mocks of the week. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Let me know which builds you thought were your favorite. And please do remember to check out our web store. Remember, uh, Black Friday sales are coming at the end of this week. And also check out the designers that I have been showing off in this episode, plus a ton of extras, which I simply didn't have time to talk about, but you're seeing the pictures flash by the screen now. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>